welcome to Potty Talk. So glad you are all here, and I know you're here because you're about to embark on this really exciting adventure called potty training. I think my personal most important thing that I will be happiest about if you leave here with, with uh, after this training, um, I will be happiest if you leave excited to start potty training. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm gonna try my best because people are always so nervous and stressed out when it comes to doing this. And if you've had any past experiences with maybe your other children or your child, probably maybe giving you a little bit of a hard time about it. Um, it's, it's stressful and it involves poop and pee and nobody likes that stuff. We just want it to go where it's supposed to go real quick and be done with it. So. I know, I know what you're going through, but please stick with me, look at it as an adventure, get excited about it, because guess what? After this process, you'll have lots of great stories to tell. You'll be able to be involved in that conversation when people start, people do, they talk about their potty training experience as parents, and the bigger the mess, the better the story, okay? So it's gonna be fun one day when you're, when you're talking about it to others. Um, there are some stories, I've been through this with so many families and they, the ones that make the moms cry, they're the ones that we laugh the most about. So remember that too. The Dyson vacuum cleaner that sucked up all the poop on the rug that she didn't know was there. Dyson, you know how they work? You have to take the whole thing apart, piece by piece, and clean it. And she was sobbing through the whole thing. Worst day ever. But we were laughing so hard we were doubled over. Because really, how can you, you can't make that up. You can't. So you just have to laugh at it. So please try to see that side of this. It's not, you know, we don't have this whole process in our bodies developed to make us crazy. We have it developed to make us think and make us work. And some of our kids make us work a little harder than others. So bear with me. Okay, we're gonna get started. We are gonna go through with you the process that <coughs> Fox and Azrin has developed. There's a book, and instead of having you guys read through the whole book, we have summarized it for you. And you will see it in these guidelines right here. It's all written out step by step, and then you also have the PowerPoint printout now, and that has, we've kind of made it so that we can go through each of these bullet points a little more in depth to help you through the process because no child is the same and they're all going to throw different twists and turns at you and I love that when I come across a child that's challenging and has we have to think out of the box and I think that's really fun so let's try to look at it that way first of all for starting the whole potty training process you have to be ready you have to feel like Rocky you have to have your boxing gloves on no no hitting please but yeah, Fox, like, visualize that you are ready. You are so fit and ready, just like Rocky. And you cannot wait to get started. And you've already told your family members that you're doing this. You've told your neighbors, maybe, that you're doing this. And your friends. You have them on call so that you can ask them for suggestions. You have the materials you need. You are mentally ready for it. So you're getting everybody on board. And then you're gonna pick a time on the calendar that's really gonna work for you. Now I want you to focus on giving yourselves at least three days to totally, totally work on it. So it's great you're at this training. I don't know if it's gonna give you enough time to process everything, but we're about to embark on a three-day weekend. So how about it? So three days where they're at home and you're intensely <coughs> working on it. Um, if you have a big holiday or you're going on vacation, nope, mm -mm. make sure it's three days where you're not going anywhere and you don't have visitors that are going to tell you their point of view and what you're doing wrong. <laughs> you know, you want to make sure that you have those three days. On those three days, prepare yourself mentally, prepare your environment, have meals ready to go, that it's going to be easy to cook so you can focus on your child. Bless you. Have people, back, back up people ready to help you out with any siblings. Just be prepared. Put it on the calendar. Actually write it out. Maybe color code it in a happy color that you like. Color code the three days 
and then give yourself a reward at the end of the three days. Because us as parents, we need reinforcement too. We need something to look forward to. We need to know, okay, no matter what, at the end of that three days, I'm gonna have something great going on. So reinforce yourselves as well. Okay, so you've got a plan, you've got everything on the calendar, and you're going to also make sure that you have your child ready. There are signs of readiness. Now, different kids have different signs of readiness. And we've got all types of kids. Like I said, we have kids with different life challenges. So maybe physically, they don't have the mobility that other kids have. So they might show different signs of readiness. If you have a child that's taking their diaper off and bringing it to you and saying, okay, can you take care of this for me? hello, they are shouting at you that they are ready. Or if you have a child that's uncomfortable in a wet diaper or a pull-up, they are ready. If you have a child that you're noticing that they're paying attention to what you're doing, as much as that's kind of annoying to us and we want our private time, if they're really interested in what you're doing in the bathroom, they may be ready. But, you know, you, you kind of have to feel it out. We know in our hearts as parents, or maybe we don't and a teacher says, come on now, I know, I see it. I see all the signs, they're ready. Really listen to the other people that are telling you that they may be ready, but also make sure you're ready and hopefully this will help you get there today. Okay, so there are some things to consider. If your child has serious behavior issues and they hate the potty, and they just want nothing to do with it, and you've tried it, and it's been a total disaster. You've got to backtrack, and you've got to start making it so it's a more positive experience. Even if you're just starting by making that bathroom a really special place, and doing special things in there. Just, sometimes, some kids, you just can't get them over through the door. So you have to work on that first. Or if you're trying this process, and you're doing what we're gonna talk about, it's called positive practice, when you're walking them five times back and forth, if they're having the worst meltdowns and they're banging their head against the floor and it's just absolutely horrible, then you're gonna to have to backtrack. Don't keep pushing it if you've got some serious behavior concerns going on. I've seen it where there's behaviors, but once they're min you know, minor behaviors, but still behaviors, minor as in tantrums, things like that, once they're potty trained, those actually improve. So, you know, you kind of have to weigh it out a little bit. It's hard. All kids are different. They're going to respond differently to different things. But you always want to have behavior in check. You know, if there's serious behaviors where they're hurting themselves, then back it up and work on that. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to the teacher and say, hey, this is going on. What do you think? Can you help me think of some ideas? Reach out and get help to work on those behaviors first. Pulling your pants up and down, I just want to talk about that. Some kids don't have the physical mobility to do that yet. Don't say, oh, they can't pull up and down their pants, so we're not even going to try potty training. I, if you think they're ready and they just don't have the physical ability to do that, then, then do this. You know, they can get some assistance. At least they're at the point where they're telling you when they have to go. You really want to work at getting rid of those the, the diapers, the backup pull-ups, I always say pull-ups, I think, were the diaper company's evil concoction to get us to keep kids not potty trained longer and longer so they can make more money. The pull-ups are seriously prolonging this process for many, many families because they're easy and they're giving mixed messages to children. So maybe they're potty trained a little and you're like, oh, we'll just throw that pull-up on real quick while we go to grandma's house because we don't want you having an accident. And then they're like, oh, but I have this thing on so I can go with it now. <coughs> and they'll rely on the pull-ups for way too long. So keep that in your mind that pull-ups are just a way to prolong this process. So when we're going through it, we'll talk about how we need to just get rid of everything. Let's stop using the pull-ups as a crutch because the company's making the money and we're getting stressed out. Okay, medical concerns, make sure you've, um, you know what your child's medical issues are. If you think that maybe there's a possibility that the ch your child doesn't even know that they have to go, and they didn't even know that they went, there, there may be something there. And I've seen it happen with kids where they, the doctor said, oh, they just don't, there's a connection that's missing and they just don't even know. And parents have spent a lot of time trying to potty train them. And 
it was because their child didn't know that they had to go. They just didn't have that sensation. It's very rare, but it does happen. Just know that. Also, children that have seizure disorders, be careful, because sometimes when a part of this process is forcing fluids, and with some kids, if you force fluids and you have them drink too much, it affects either medications that will run through their bodies quicker, or it may cause kids' seizures to increase. So know what your child's medical needs are, and ask your doctor if you have any questions about anything. Ask your doctor. Okay, so you're preparing the environment. If you are asking your child to let go of this one thing that they've been doing for so long and it's so easy and they get all this attention every time they get their diaper changed or their pull-up changed, and you're asking them to just go in this little cold, dark room all by themselves and do this other thing that's gonna take time from their toys and the things they wanna do, yeah, that, that just doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Would you wanna change that? What has already been put in place for so long? You're changing a big time routine here. Something that's been highly motivating. They get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention when we change diapers and pull-ups. They get a lot of attention when they have accidents because we're giving a lot of energy to that because we don't like pee and poop. We want to get through it or we're having fun with them when we're changing diapers. So it is a very big bonding time when you have an infant and a small child and you're changing diapers because you're right there you're with them, you're present, you're not on your phone. You know, you're not texting, you're totally there. So think about how this is going to be a difficult change. So you've gotta make that space in there really great to get them in there. And you've gotta put the phone away during this three-day process, and you've got to give your child that one-on-one -on -one attention. You've gotta slowly transition it into there from where you usually do the changing and giving them the attention for the messes and everything. So positive attention in the bathroom. Make the bathroom a place they want to go to. Fun, also you want to choose fun rewards and we're going to talk about rewards later. Some parents will say, oh, there's nothing that my child likes. Well, there is always something and you have to be creative, a little more creative sometimes. But so say, what are your favorite children's favorite characters nowadays? What's your child's favorite character? Daniel Tiger. Daniel Tiger. Okay, perfect. So maybe a Daniel Tiger helium balloon in the bathroom. Or maybe a Daniel Tiger loves to go pee pee on the potty sign. It's so easy to make nowadays. You just do some, you know, break some copyright rules and cut and paste <laughs> it on a Word document and type out the title. Daniel Tiger loves to go pee pee in the potty. And you pop it up there and you go, look at this. It's a message from Daniel Tiger. What does it say? Daniel Tiger loves to go pee pee in the pot. What? He does. I didn't know tigers go. I guess he does. What? And here's the potty. I think he wants you to go pee pee in here. If you get really into that and use their characters, use their interests, get creative. Make it. And then I guarantee they're going to like wander in there and go, seriously, Daniel? Really? You know, they'll all be looking at it. Make it to where it's interesting to them. They want to be in there. Um, but we'll talk more about all the reinforcement and those little ideas, too. Um, siblings, get the siblings involved. I always like to talk about how my son, he was one of those enigmas. It was really difficult when I first started pie training him. And then I implemented the Fox and Ash, and I'm like, here we go. It's going to be great because I know this stuff, and I've potty trained lots of students and we're good we got it and then I went because I couldn't find a reward I tried so hard to find a reward for that boy but he's just so laid back and there's still to this day like there's no character no song or no movie nothing's a favorite he's just kind of like cool he likes everything so I tried the cars because he's a boy so sure he's gonna like cars so I put him on the shelf in the bathroom I was like if you go pee pee in the potty you'll get a car and he's like cool yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it wouldn't do it. It wouldn't work. So I'm like, okay, I know. I'm the professional. I know that if the reinforcer's not working, change it up. So I changed it up, and I tried uh, gummy bears, and I put them on the shelf. Gummy bears, you're going to get gummy bears. 
He's like, awesome, still not doing it. So that didn't work. And then one day from, I came home and I had gotten, somebody gave me as a little prize, a, a stick with all these like colorful gummy fish on it with little um, like the sugar on it, so sparkly and really cool. And there were like five fish on it. So I held it up to him and my daughter, who's two years older than him, was that right there and she was just like, she loves sugar. She and the sparkles, and it was right up her alley. I'm like, man, too bad she potty trained herself practically, and I'm not, this isn't her reinforcer. So I held it up and I'm like, if you go pee pee in the potty, you can have a fish. And my daughter was like, can I have a fish? I want a fish. And I was like, if he goes pee pee in the potty, both of you get a fish. And she was like, Oh, okay, okay, go pee pee in the potty, Matthew, come on, you can get a fish, go pee pee in the potty. Well, wouldn't you guess, his sister was his reinforcer. He wanted to make her happy. He didn't care about the fish, he didn't care about the cars, he didn't care about anything. He cared about what she, her excitement, and that she was happy for him. And it worked instant. Like, he literally just went and went in the potty, and I was like, I didn't have that on my list of reinforcers. A sibling? What? So you never know. You gotta keep trying different reinforcers. You gotta, it's like a puzzle, it's like a mystery. You gotta figure out. Pretend you're in the potty training escape room. How many of you have done an escape room? <laughs> I know we're the only ones to do it. It's so fun. But it's fun, right? You gotta figure out all these little locks and codes and this is potty training. You're in a potty training escape room. You gotta figure out the special locks and codes to get through to them, to get them to go and do this. Okay, so like we said, clear your schedule. You're gonna want to work on this near the bathroom. So you're not gonna wanna be downstairs cooking. Cooking is like one of those things that get you so distracted trying to cook during this time and then have them as their main bathroom that they're gonna be using upstairs if you have two floors. So just make it so that if you have a good downstairs bathroom, make that the main bathroom where you're gonna work on this. Preferably if there's tile. Um, and if you have a, like this ancient oriental rug that's worth millions, <laughs> roll it up and put it away. <laughs> because you've got to mentally prepare yourself. And if you're worried about messes on any surface, Best, then you're doomed I'm telling you so there's one mom that I worked with and she was she admitted because her daughter was older she was in middle school and we were having a backtrack because she was schedule trained so we her mom and the staff members at school everybody had to bring her they brought her like once an hour to the bathroom she never initiated and that's not potty training if your child is not in some way telling you that they have to use the bathroom or going themselves or doing a sign or b -b 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 making a noise or something to tell you when they feel the sensation, if you're only taking them on a schedule, then they're not really potty trained. Potty trained is all about them being independent and taking themselves or telling someone they need to be taken. So this girl had been schedule trained her whole life till middle school I think at that time she was about seventh grade so we had to start all fresh at the beginning with the potty training process even though she was going in the toilet we had to reinforce that so she wants to be in there she'd want to go independently her mom had just moved into a new house and she was like I don't know I don't think I can do it and she was admittedly very emotional and would get so upset when there were messes and it's a girl and a mom and those emotions are like so you have to take emotion out of it so what I, I, I said you've got to take care of your own emotions you've got to figure it out so when I went back another time I walked in and she had tarped everything the whole house was covered in tarp she covered every couch and chair and she took out lawn chairs so her daughter could sit in the lawn chairs and not the couch just in case it went through. She really did take care of herself by covering every, every inch that this girl was going to be in during this process. So clear the area. Kind of talked about doing a bathroom makeover. 
think about your child's sensitivity. If they're very sensitive to sound, work on the flushing later on. You want to work on the flushing, but wait till they're a little more desensitized. That's not what we're focusing on here is right away. If they don't mind the flushing, work on it right away. But if the flushing is something that's stopping them because they're very sensitive to noise, then put like just tape over the handle so they feel secure that it's not going to flush. And you want to take a lot more time till they're really potty trained before you take them to the um, Walmart and Target where the automatic flushers are. Because sometimes those are like trouble for our kids with um, you know, the auditory sensitivities. Um, maybe it's too cold in the bathroom. Put a little space heater or a little warm fuzzy rug. Make it more comfortable for them that they're going to want to be in there. I wouldn't adapt the toilet itself too much. For some kids, you, you do have to to get through this, but if you can avoid adapting the toilet or using one of those tiny toilets, avoid it if you can. Because you want to make your toilet as similar to Target, Walmart, Grandma's house, neighbor's house, toilet at school as possible. Because you want them to generalize the skill of going in the toilet quickly to other environments after they've got it pat, down pat in your house. So keep that in your mind. In order to be able to generalize, let's keep that toilet as, as is. Uh, and I've had plenty of parents say, well, what about the little, should I put the little <coughs> potty next to the toilet? I'm like, you know what, skip the little potty, just go right to the toilet, because then you're going to have to work a lot harder later to transition them. Maybe, maybe not. You know your child. But try to keep the toilet as similar to other toilets as possible, if you can. Do you, you still put a, like a smaller seat on the toilet? You Most could do that, but think to yourself, if we're in, you know, our, my child is no longer in a diaper or pull-up. So if two weeks from now, if we're at the store and they really have to go, are they going to dig their heels in and have an accident in Target because there's no adaptable toilet seat? Okay. So think about so that. So how do they usually hold on? They have adaptable toilet seats that are portable. They fold up. They're like maybe the size of my purse. Oh. Okay. Yep. So you're going to have to make sure you're taking that with you and use that one while you're potty training. Or um, I've had parents, you just teach them to hold on if they're, if they're really little and they're afraid they're going to fall in. I even had a parent who taught, who potty trained their child by turning around backwards on the toilet and holding on to the back of the toilet, but then had to turn, teach to turn around. And even if you have boys, teach them to sit first because you're gonna want them to then go from the pee pee to go right to the, not right necessarily, but eventually to the poop. So even if it's just urination for the boys, sitting, first, right. start, start sitting. sitting. Start is it, is sitting. it okay okay. to continue that way? Um, the boys sitting in. Okay, so great question. You're gonna have them sitting through the whole potty training process and it, until they're very, very comfortable, but eventually, keep in your mind, you're gonna have to teach them to sand. Because if you're, they're in a public restroom and my son and husband will tell me in a second, they've got to stand at those urinals because the toilets sometimes are so incredibly disgusting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they're going into the men's room, you're going to want them to use the urinal. Or sometimes maybe that the urinal is an only option. Or, you know, there's... So eventually, you want them to learn to stand. But, and have dad teach it. Um, my son, I, we never even got to that point, and all of a sudden I walked past the bathroom, and um, he had to close the door, which we worked on later. <laughs> but I walked past, and I'm like, what? I think he's standing while he's going to the bathroom. He had, like, we figured it out, because I said to, to my husband, did you teach him how to stand? He's like, no. Nope. We figured out that it was the kids at school. Uh, he saw other kids at school doing it. He's like, oh, okay, you know. Oh, and then you have to be careful. He tried that then at Disney World in the middle. <laughs> he had to go while we were at Disney World, and there's a tree. And I'll just stop to go. And we're like, no! Oh, it, the stories are so fun. I'm sure he doesn't appreciate that. But he's 12 now. He'd definitely not be happy that I shared that. Okay, so reinforcers, the bathroom makeover. Um, um, there was a mom that I was just, she's a friend of mine, and she texted me a picture over the break that I told her to have a, um, a tray or something for her on her lap because she would, 
you know, there's kids that will play in the water between their legs. If you have one of those, give them a little tub or, you know, just a plastic tub with things in it that they can play while they're sitting. Because you're going to want them to sit for a little while until they tinkle, 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 whoops, accidentally go, and then they get their reinforcer and eventually they make the connection. <coughs> oh, that's where I'm supposed to put it now. Because they're so used to for so long putting it somewhere else. You've got to get them to where they realize they put it in there. So sometimes you have to give them things to do while they're sitting because they will be sitting there for up to no longer than 20 minutes. Okay, so make sure they're, they're doing stuff. Maybe they're going to watch the iPad for 20 minutes, or, but then you take it away when they're not on there. Reinforce, make it fun, reinforcing that they're sitting on the potty. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going into all the particulars. Biggest thing that I can, there, now there's like four big things, but this is one. <coughs> Regular underwear, okay? Put it in your heads. The diapers and the pull-ups are going away. Put them far away. Put them where you won't find them, except at nighttime you can use them at night. But put them where you will not be tempted to use them just to go to the store. Or I'm really afraid about the bus ride. I'm just going to quick put them on and Put them away so you're not tempted because you're giving your child mixed messages. The underwear picking process, if your child cares about characters, find you know, the tiger on the underwear if you can. I'm sure Amazon has it. And if he cares about that, you could say, you, Daniel Tiger, Daniel Tiger goes pee pee in the potty. Let's buy Daniel Tiger underwear while you're learning to go pee pee in the potty. And then you put Daniel Tiger and there he is and you go, Sure you don't go pee pee on Daniel. Go pee pee where Daniel wants you to in the potty. Or if you have a little girl who loves princesses, get the princess underwear. Don't go pee pee on the princess. Go pee pee in the potty. So think about if they don't care about underwear, get the cheapest that <laughs> you're gonna throw away, and just get a lot of it. Get stock up on a lot of underwear. And some kids really care about being part of the process of picking them and they feel really special. Um, I had one student who loved his underwear so much that his mom made the underwear a reinforcer. So she strung up, he loves SpongeBob. So she bought all his SpongeBob underwear, strung the underwear up in the bathroom, and it looked like, you know, a a happy birthday sign, strung them all up, and then every time he went in the potty, he got to take one down and put it on. <laughs> Love it. So it was a built a natural reinforcer that worked twofold. It was great. Um, there was something else I was going to say about the underwear picking. Um, I'm sure I'll think of it later. It was another story, but just make sure regular underwear. Get excited. Get, oh, I know. So if your child has a really, really hard time transitioning from the diaper to the underwear because they feel different, and some kids are really strict about what they put on their bodies, and they may have sensitivity issues and they don't want to put on that underwear at all. I had a child that I worked with like that, and so what we did is he loved lollipops. So we told him, if you have the underwear on, you can have a lollipop. And we actually just told him, just at, at first we had to start real, real slow. We said, put the underwear on for 10 seconds, and then you get a lollipop. So, and we told him a limited time with a lollipop. So we sat there, and we, he put it on. He was like, he thought he, we were making him put on like a sheath of nails or something. And he put it on. We're like, one, you can do it, two. And we had the lollipop, like, you're going to get it. And we made it to 10, and we made such a big deal. And then we gave him the lollipop, and we let him keep it. And then we set the timer, and the timer went off. And we said, okay, you're finished with the lollipop. Now, put the, un and we let him take it off, because he couldn't get it off fast enough. Now, put the underwear back on, and if you have the underwear on, you can have the lollipop for the whole time you have the underwear on. That was all it took. He never looked back never cared about the diapers, pull-ups, and was potty trained uh, soon after, because then they started the potty training process. And m the mom thought it was going to take months for him to transition from the, from the pull-up to the underwear, and it took literally the 10 seconds plus 10 more. So it took a little reinforcement, 
and he got used to it pretty quick. So it could work out that way for you. It could take longer, but you're in a potty training escape room, so you're gonna figure it out. If you can't, you're gonna ask for ideas. Okay, so like I, I mentioned briefly before, make sure your kids have a full bladder. And it sounds really counterproductive, because you're like, wait a minute, you just told us to put them in regular underwear, nothing soaking up anything, and you want them to have a full bladder? Yes, have it as full as possible, because you want them to practice having accidents and learning where to go in the right place. You're going to want them to practice a lot for them to get it through to their brain that this is how we do it now. Okay, so full bladder. Use, maybe your child loves apple juice, but he never gets to have it because it has so much sugar. So give them that apple juice. Let them have the apple juice. Let them have the things that you don't typically to fill the bladder. Okay, and like I said, make sure you know your child's medical needs. If filling them with too much fluids is going to affect them medically, check with your doctor before you do that. Okay, you can also do popsicles as a reward. If your kid loves popsicles, that's an awesome thing that they just have a quick popsicle after they go pee pee in the potty, and then they that increases their fluids at the same time. So it's another one of those win win reinforcers. Or we, had, we worked with a student who loves soda and he can never really have it. So it, we got put Dixie cups up in the bathroom and he got like a little shot of soda every time he went in the potty. Mm -hmm. And that was the reinforcer that did it for him. Um, you know, but make sure, when, well, we'll talk about reinforcers, but make sure you're providing the school <coughs> with, with whatever reinforcer really, really works and that you're, you, if you're sending them to school after the three days, that they have a reinforcer to give them as well. How does, how does it work during nap time and stuff? Because on those three days when the kids still have to have a nap, yes. two hours or whatever, yep. how does that work? So the, there's multiple things. What we say is they can have pull-ups during, or diapers during sleep times. But I would be careful if you're sending them to another environment because what if it doesn't come off then? Okay. It's going to prolong the process. Okay. So, you know, if you have it that his schedule has him going potty right before nap time, always send lots of extra clothes. You know, if, if he has a place that he naps, send some of those absorbent pads to go under where you know, over his nap things or over, you know, just prepare the environment. If you think it's gonna be a problem, he's not gonna come out of that pull up right away. But if they're at home and they're napping and they nap hard, cause some kids nap so hard they don't get that sensation to get up and go to the bathroom or, you know, you're in, part in, in the middle of the potty training process. If that's gonna really shake things up, then they can have a pull up for nap time, but make sure as soon as they wake up, right to the bathroom and then take it off. Okay. Back in regular underwear. Okay. It's harder also, and we'll talk about this a little more, to potty train if they're going to many multiple environments. So you're gonna, you wanna cut down, you know, it's good that they're gonna go to school and generalize that after you've done it at home for at least three days. But if they go to home and daycare, then you're gonna wanna really make sure everybody's on the same page to make sure that works because that, sometimes that takes a little longer if like daycare is not on the same page. So make sure you've met with every care provider or if they have a babysitter, make sure the babysitter knows the protocol, make sure everybody's on board. For those, you know, give it a good two weeks that everybody's really on it and keep checking on it. And we have the, um, these data sheets you can take that, are, that everybody's gotta keep up with and keep track of every half hour. And that's actually where we are right now. For the schedule, you're gonna take your child to the bathroom every 30 minutes. So I love the Alexa. I use Alexa all the time. I wish Alexa was around when I was potty training my son because I totally would have used her. I use, we usually have like three Alexa timers going at the same time. But I would have said, Alexa, set potty timer for 30 minutes. And she would have let me know and reminded me every time I would have to take them to the bathroom. Or use your phone if you don't have Alexa. Um, I had to rely on my daughter because she really wanted those fish. And she was a good, better timekeeper than me at the time. So 
you know, know your strengths, know your weaknesses. If you're not good at keeping track of time, find something that will help you stick with it. Because the you want to catch them where they have to go, and they're going to go in the potty, and then they can get reinforced, and they realize, oh, this is a really cool thing, putting that pee pee in the potty. I want to do it all the time. You got to get them there. Um, so. Like I said, set timers and keep the data. So this data sheet, there's one specifically for the weekend, for when you're starting it out. This really needs to go in back to school with your child when they start back to school. So say you're doing it, you're starting it this afternoon. Then Tuesday, when they go back to school on Tuesday morning, this should go to school with them. So the teacher can see exactly where you're at with the potty training process. You know, they could be like, oh, we still have a lot of work to do. Or, wow, that's awesome, I'm so excited. You know, you're gonna get them pumped up and lots of communication, send them emails. Make sure you're sending the clothes, make sure you've talked about this beforehand and make sure they're prepared for it because it's a big project for the teachers, but I promise you, those teachers want your kids potty trained. They want your kids initiating because that takes a load off an end. So they're will any of that I've ever worked with, they're willing to go through this because they want your children potty trained. And uh, many cases more than you do. So definitely get them on board. Keep up the communication between home and school. Say, you know, just little tidbits like over the weekend, they don't have to respond to you, but just tell them, I'm so excited. You know, he went for the first time in the potty and he got his reinforcer and he loved it so much. We're so excited. Let him know that stuff. I love when I get emails like that from parents because it pumps me up. And then it gets the teachers excited and pumped up for that day when they come back in and they get to pick, up, pick it up and they know that it's working. So reinforcement is so, so, so important. I just talked to a teacher in the hallway about a, a student and the story she told me, I said my... My thing, I said, reinforcement, reinforcement, reinforcement. The child was not reinforced for going in the potty. There was nothing in it for him. So why change the really cool routine we already had in place? So you've got to make sure there's something good they're working for. That little girl, or not little girl, big girl that the mom put the tarp down on the floor, her child's reinforcement was the mom playing the guitar. She loved music, so every time she went peeping in the potty, mom came into the bathroom <laughs> and serenaded her with a guitar. I love it. We had another mom. She knew her daughter loved to wear her high heel shoes. So every time she went peeping in the potty, she would pull out her best high heel shoes, and the daughter got to walk around them. Clink, 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 clink. She didn't get to walk in those shoes any other time, though, only when she went peeping in the potty. The other mom did not play the guitar at all, only when her child went in the potty. Um, we ha in the past, now kids are on iPads so much more than they were when we first, first started doing this. So the iPads were good reinforcers. But if you know that you, that child's going to be on the iPad other times, the iPad should not be a reinforcer. And sometimes it's hard to find things that are more reinforcing to the iP than the iPad. And, you know, if you think that that's the only thing and you think you can survive the three days without your child on the iPad, use it. Use the thing that's the most reinforcing. But they can only have it for a short amount of time after they've gone PB in the potty. Um, you really sometimes have to get super creative. Like I said, the, I love the reinforcers that either are double, you know, work double for you by putting fluids in them, or they are free. Like some kids just want a big hug from you and they're motivated by your reaction. And on the flip side, make sure when they have accidents, you have no reaction. Because if kids are motivated by your reaction, I guarantee you that a lot of them have figured out that they like it when you have a negative reaction as well. So if you get really upset about that poop getting sucked up into that Dyson, they're probably going to do it again. So be very careful with emotion. <coughs> there are many kids that are fo hyper, laser, focused on what you're feeling. So I say, like, when they have accidents, you got to think like Spock. Is that I do it right? Yeah, like Spock. No emotion. Don't, nothing. You're not mad. I know it's hard. 
when they when there's a big puddle on the floor you can't be mad and there's some I've worked with a few girls in the past that oh when mom was mad that's awesome or they'll hold their poop in too a lot of there's kids that will hold it in because either they're afraid of the anger or they know they know that holding it in you know creates emotion for their child for their parent because they're not pooping so there's a lot of psychology involved here did you realize that this was going to be part psychology class <laughs> so please don't show emotion when there's accidents save that emotion for the positive that when they do go pee, pee in the potty so that's when they get all of your energy and emotion and everything good if your child does not like it know your child you know them. if they don't like it when you go ah, you pee pee the potty. I'm so excited. and if they shut down when you're giving too much emotion then you're gonna give them the little you know golf clap without too much emotion you know work with your child and what is going to reinforce them. It's not about you, it's that thing. And it is about you controlling your emotions. And that was the hardest thing for this mom who had the middle school student controlling her emotions. And she would say, I can't do it. When she has an accident, I just can't take it. I'm like, you've got to get there. Our kids teach us amazing things. Thank goodness for them, because they teach us to control our emotions. Imagine that. How awesome is that? Okay, so this is also another important thing, and this goes right back to that reinforcing. Five minute checks. So if your child likes it when you're happy, then you're going to definitely go over and go, oh, look at you, you are dry. I am so proud of you, you are still dry. And you're gonna be really happy for them, that they're dry, and let them know that. Try to remember, that's a hard one, every five minutes, what? Yeah, it works, every five minutes. You're dry. So you might want to have Alexa help you on that one, too. <laughs> um, and you could actually program Alexa to say, is so, you know, is Matthew dry? You know, or something you could program that you say something and then Alexa says something else, you know. I, I really don't work for Amazon. I'm sorry, I keep coming back to that. But it's a fun little tool. Use tools around you that your kids might enjoy. Um, okay, so then if they're, when you do the five minute check, and usually it doesn't take a check to realize your child has wet, because <laughs> you see it on the floor, you see it seeping down their pants. Um, if they are wet, like I said, no emotion, and we're gonna go to the next slide. Okay, here's, I have, I have to throw this in like a monkey wrench, because this is a very important piece. Do not prompt your child during this process. Do you know what that means, prompting your child? Do not do what every parent on the planet does all the time and what even adults do to each other. <laughs> do you have to go, do you have to go baby? Do you have to go potty? Even if you see them sitting there like, don't say a word. There are so many children out there who are waiting for your prompt before they go to the bathroom. Did you know that? That's called prompt dependent. I've heard adults saying to other adults, did you go to the bathroom? Do you have to go before we leave? Like, what? No, let them figure it out and go for themselves. But I know as a parent, you don't want to have the mess. But during this process, and even for a long time after, you want to make sure you're not prompting your child. You want them to have that accident if they're holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, because you want them to learn to stop it there and go to the bathroom and go where they're supposed to go. If they're doing this, they obviously know <laughs> at that point that they're not supposed to go here. So they're, they're so close to getting it. <coughs> let them have the accident. Can you ask, when you need to go, will you let mommy know? Basically the same thing. I wouldn't say a word. Yep, okay. that's a prompt. And there's kids, I, I've seen it through the years in schools, older kids, high school kids that just wait. They wait for a teacher to tell them to go. That's prompt dependent, you do not want that. You want them to tell you and to go themselves. So you don't, within, so there was like a 30 minute, you said take the child every 30 minutes, but you're saying don't prompt the child. So right. Does that but, mean? Okay, so it? when you take them, when the timer goes off, beep, beep, it's 30 minutes, say, okay, let's go potty. You're not saying, do you have to go potty? In the middle of those 30 minutes. Oh, if you see okay. that they're like, or you think they have to go, you go, 
nope, don't do that. You're, you're on a schedule. You're telling them when they're going to go. And in this process, this time is before they've initiated. Okay, so if, if your child is not verbal as yet. Yes. So you're saying just let them go, like lead the way basically? Uh -huh. if, like, and you're telling them at that point on this 30 minute schedule, at this point, you're telling them, let's go, oh, timer, let's go pee pee in a potty. We're gonna go pee pee in a potty. And you put them on the toilet. The prompting is more for later on after they learn, after they're actually going in the toilet. Okay, so not, not during the three days, you were saying after? Yes, that's more for after, but don't do it between the 30 minutes during this process either. Okay. Okay. So how do they, I'm trying to figure out how, especially a child who doesn't talk as yet. Uh-huh. And, um, and you can <coughs> teach them what, when you take them, you're going to go, you know, whatever way that here's potty or some people do restroom or a pat or they could bring you a picture. There's okay. different ways. Children do not have to be verbal to initiate to go to the restroom. Definitely not. I've seen it. This one girl, the middle school girl, she passed. And now they'll be in a store, and actually her mom says she doesn't even tell them. She just kind of starts, she always knows where the bathroom is. And she kind of starts walking towards the bathroom. So teach him, figure out how you think he would do best, you know, mobility-wise. Is he able to do this, or this, or this, or make it an enunciation, or um, give a picture. And then while you're taking him that 30 minutes, do it. Okay, we're going to go potty. Let's go. Okay, okay. time for potty. And you can try a few different ways so, so that he, so he's going to connect the, if he has an accident he's going to connect that to going that's to not the when night. there's an accident we're going to talk about what you do when there's an accident okay okay yep so put the accident aside we're not there yet this okay. is just scheduling every 30 minutes and right. in between the 30 minutes you're not asking them if they have to go okay, okay. yes it, it is a little confusing you'll get there don't worry okay so here's what we do when there's an accident Kristen, no. can you come, please? <laughs> okay, so here's my wet spot. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Okay, so here's my child, my wet spot. <laughs> okay, so I'm over here, and I'm, you know, I'm staying focused, but I'm a little unfocused, and all of a sudden I go, okay, we don't go pee-pee on the potty here. Come on. Let's go potty. Can we go on here? And then I'm not really going to take it. I'm gonna, I'm, she's going to go in the potty, she's going to pull down her pants, underwear, she's going to sit on the potty. I'm going to say, we go pee pee here, go pee pee on the potty here. And then I'm going to walk with her back. Pull up. Yeah, pull them up. Bring them out. Mm -hmm. We don't go pee pee here. We go in the potty. <coughs> and I'm going to do this five times. Five, I know. Yeah. So uh -huh. every time there's an accident, five times. Yes. Oh, yes. And then what if? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm okay. throwing myself on. Okay. She throws herself on the floor. I'm going to just try my best. We don't go pee-pee here. And then if she's making it absolutely impossible to get there that fifth time, okay, then, okay, let's change clothes. You know, you can do four if you have to. Um, there was one little girl, a kindergartner, and she was very verbal. <laughs> And she told her mom, her like third accident, she goes, I got this, I got this, I got this. <laughs> and she did it herself. <laughs> she did the whole thing and she, we don't go pee pee here. And, and then she proclaimed herself queen of the potty and she was potty trained. So for some kids, they'll see it as a punishment and they'll be miserable and it's going to be tough but you're gonna have to stick with it. Cause they're trying to get you to stop what you're doing, but you're not gonna wanna be dragging them by the hair back and forth. Don't battle it out too much because then your emotion's gonna be in it and it's too much emotion and it's just this horrible blob. So if you have burst of enough. Yes, yeah. yep. So if you have to break it down to three times, do that. Work, work with your child where your child's at, but preferably five. And for me, when I was doing it with my son, I kept losing count. So I had to get my data girl, my daughter, and she counted for me. Because <laughs> at one point I was like, okay, we're done. She's like, uh-uh, that was only four. You got one more. I'm like, oh, thank you. You'll go be here. You'll be in the body. So 
And he, my son was fine with the five times. He doesn't really argue too much about things. So he went back and forth. But. Yep, so positive practice, so important. I've had so many parents tell me that this is what did it. This is what got their child potty trained. And sometimes it happens very quickly if you're doing a positive practice. And because you're taking time out of their day, you know, you're, you're disrupting things. What? I don't want to do this. And you're not fun while we're doing this. You're just like, no emotion. I like emotion. I want you happy. Some kids, why aren't you mad? I want that back. I want you mad. And then they'll try to get you mad in other ways because they want that from you. But you're not giving it to them. So then they're going to, you know, say, okay, I want the happy mom when I go in the potty. So let's just do that. Okay, so positive practice is so important and do it with no emotion. You are not punishing your child. For some kids, you're just training their brain. You're practicing it. It's practice, practice, practice. And you're getting it to click for them. Because some just go through it and they're like, I don't get it. And then it takes that five times doing five times, five times back and forth that they go, oh, now I get it. I'm not supposed to go here. And you're like, yes, that's what I've been telling you for two years now. No emotion. Okay, so the positive practice does multiple things, but I'm telling you parents swear by it. Very important. So the golden nugget that you are trying for in potty training is initiation. It's your child either walking to the bathroom and going themselves, or pulling you to the bathroom, or telling you they have to go to the bathroom. That is initiation, <coughs> and that is what you want. If you have taught them to do this, if they do this, you better be watching, you better be aware, because they might initiate and you don't even see it. So make sure you're focused, because this is what you want. This is the dream. You want the initiation bottom line. So once they initiate, one time, one time, you stop scheduling. No more 30 minutes back and forth. Now it's all you, kid. I know you got this. I am not going to take you every 30 minutes now. Alexa, you can take a day off, or you can take you know, the rest of their life off until they need to time them on something else. Um, the ball is now in the child's court. So you're basically letting it go now. And they, are they gonna have accidents now? because you're not taking every 30 minutes? Oh yeah, they certainly are. So mentally prepare yourself. Here it comes, but it's good, I'm so excited. And this is where you email the teacher and grandma and a neighbor and your friend and you tell them, she initiated, yay! And everybody's gonna email back and say, I'm so proud of you, that's wonderful. Or somebody's gonna say, what, what does that mean? Okay, so that's what you want. You want to get excited about that one initiation. And then once you're over your excitement, go, okay, here we go. Get my Rocky gloves on. I've got this. We're there. We're almost there. And then you're just going to move on. So from here, when you see your child struggling because they have to go, you're not going to say, do you need to go, Bonnie? Don't say it. Wait it out. Let them have the accident. Let it happen. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> because then you get to do positive practice. You get to do positive practice. And you're going to start training that brain to initiate all the time. What if the three days go by and you know, you, like, the child has never initiated? So then at that and point, you go back to school. Yep, you are going to send that data and you're going to off to school and then you're going to sit back on the couch, take a deep breath, pop a few bonbons, email the teacher, and, hey, hope you're having a great day. <laughs> and you're going to really hope that things may work out better for school than they did for you. And I've seen it where it didn't, it didn't happen in the three days. Typically, it usually does, but if it didn't, the initiation didn't happen. I've seen it where it happened at school. And then it was the teacher that got to mail the, uh, email the parents so excited. Okay. Because that's a big deal for a teacher. They get 
like I said, they want this so bad, just like you do, if not more, and they will get super excited that they got to help in that process. So you've given them a gift by sending your child to get high trained at school. <laughs> so we would just bring, and we'd bring like the extra clothes and everything, yes. we would just we come to the office and just drop it off. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or send it in a backpack or, and it's send the reinforcement. Okay, like yeah, that. no. <laughs> Send it with, you know, packaged up nice underwear, extra clothes, extra shoes. Yes, shoes, socks. Um, reinforcer, reinforcer for teachers. <laughs> you know, like have it all ready to go. You've got to be planned and prepared. Yep. Uh, another question is like, when we train at home, we take off the pants and the underwear and tie them. And then if it's on the outside, you will have to hold the pants till this ankle. Yeah, so I would start doing that at home where you're just, because it's only underwear, so you're just pulling down. Not you're not taking it all off. Yeah. Yep, perfect question. I'm glad you asked that because I've talked about a lot of parents about that, how everything comes off. Or teachers will say, he takes everything off. I'm like, well, that's probably what he does at home. So request the parent to start working on not taking everything off. You want everything to kind of mirror as much as possible. You want home to start to look like, I mean, imagine your child in a college dorm. <laughs> How's that gonna look? Let's get them looking like that. You know, how it's gonna have to be someday. Start working on it now. Yep, great question. Okay, so what now? Continue to force the fluids. Forcing sounds terrible. Continue <coughs> to encourage that they drink plenty of fluids. Let's say it like that. Um, and then, after your child has had 20 initiations, I know you're not gonna really count out 20, I didn't. I was like, eh, it's been a few days, I think we're good. Then you're gonna take them outside the home to help them generalize it to another place, to a public place. And a suggestion is that you take them somewhere where there isn't an automatic flusher, there isn't a lot of people. It's, you know, you could go and do some scouting and find a place that's really good. I love the little mom and pop shops like that have just the one little bathroom that looks a lot like a, a bathroom at home and take them to use the restroom there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill them with fluids, take them in the car. I know it sounds crazy, they're only in a car. But if you have to mentally prepare yourself, put down those absorbent pads in your car. If you're worried about them going on the bus, just send those absorbent pads to go under them in the bus because they're not gonna have the pull up anymore. You've gotta let it go. But, but be, mentally prepare yourselves and do what you have to do to, to make sure there's not gonna be too much of a mess. Um, so you take them to a public place. You can try it even at grandma's house or neighbor's house or something. Make sure they know first what you do. Take them and show them where the potty is because they're already used to initiating at home. Now you want them, them to initiate somewhere else. But in order for them to do that, they have to know that there is a potty here and get really excited about the potty. Look, oh my goodness, this potty looks just like ours. And maybe if you're at grandma's house or neighbor's house, you throw up the tiger to make it look a little the same. Just put the tiger there on the wall so that they, oh yeah, there he is, he's watching me. He wants me to go pee pee in the potty. So you show them where the, the toilet is and then you just move on. So if you're at that mom and pop shop, you're just gonna browse around, look around. Or if you're really brave and you do Target or Walmart first, then you just do your shopping list. And then if they initiate, fabulous. And then they get to go peep in the potty. If they have an accident, have an escape plan. Be prepared, it could happen. If they don't initiate, they don't have an accident, and you're done, you just go, and you get in the car, and you go home, and you move on, because they're used to initiating at home. Get them used to going in public places, though, please. Um, I worked with a student who would only use a bathroom in two places for poop. For pee pee, he would go other places, but two places for poop. Home, his home, only one bathroom in the home, and only grandparents' bathroom in India, only two places he would poop. Do you think that causes a problem? Oh yeah. So we had to work on first him going in different toilets at home and then work closely with school to get him to go to, at school. 
But once we started really focusing on it and reinforcing it, it only took like a week. So it really, it's doable. If you say my child can't or my child never will, it's not true. You just got to focus on it and work on it and reinforce it. They will. What about step stools? Like, because yeah. like the regular potties are too you know, high. Uh -huh. A little one yeah. to get on. Yeah, I think step stools are fine if you're doing it at home. Just know you're not going to be, you know, they're going to have to get a little help somewhere else if they can. Will that cause confusion? When I, you don't, think I don't think so. I think it's more when you adapt the actual seat. If they're not used to sitting on something and then okay. you try to generalize it. But I think step stools are okay. And actually step stools are nice for teaching to poop because it just puts your body in a better spot for pooping. So I think step stools are fine. I always use step stools with my kids too. Okay. So yeah, I think that's good. Would that be okay if we say if you're on your outside that you will be getting a reinforcer when you have your hair? Yes. And mm -hmm. you're gonna keep up the reinforcer, especially when you're generalizing it to other places. And can we ask while we are in shopping, do you want to go pee pee? No. have to wait for the institution. Yep. Good question. Yep. Don't. Don't prompt. But bring them to the bathroom, right? When yep. You First, so when you get there, you're going to show them. Okay. And they could go at that time. They might go and at so that you time. You can tell them, like, when you're showing the bathroom, like, we can, like, you go pee pee and you get this reinforcer. Can we say that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're showing them where it is. You're showing it's an option. You're showing them that they get the reinforcer here too, and then eventually you're gonna, you know, take move. The take, yep. Because mm -hmm. you're not gonna want them to be 25 expecting the goldfish every time they go potty, right? Oh, sorry. So if yeah. you're in a public place and you had an accident, uh huh. Do we still do the positive? No. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> yeah. So and that's the thing. Like they'll do that. They'll do positive passes practice at school, but know that when your child is being potty trained at school, they're probably not going to be going to the motor lab. They're not going to be out and about if they are not initiating yet and they're having frequent accidents because you don't want to have to do anything like that in public. You don't want your child doing positive practice, you know, out by a cafeteria when there's other kids seeing it. You never want that. So don't ever, you know, make a scene of it or anything for your child in public. That's for home where it's quiet and safe and there's no other eyes watching. Yeah, that's a fabulous question. Very good. Yeah. No, you're not going to be in a Walmart like, excuse me, we're on number four. We go from people here. We go, Nobody go near that spot. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Great question. Okay, so bowel training, poop. Raise your hand if you love poop. No, I'm not raising my hand. I do not like poop can't stand it. We don't like poop. So we want it to get in that toilet as soon as possible. We want to get kids to learn to wipe themselves as soon as possible. It helps everyone. So this happens and unfortunately there's that silly joke that it always takes a little longer than the pee. I wish it, and so for some kids actually it's the poop started first when they sat on the toilet. They had to poop and it just kind of plopped out and they started, they started pooping first. Wow, I wish. That's awesome. Usually the poop comes later. And sometimes it comes two months later where they figure out that goes in the toilet. Um, sometimes more than that. So for me, I had to buy lots and lots of extra underwear because I'm not cleaning that in no sink in my house. It's going in the garbage. So, and don't show your child that you're throwing it in the garbage either because then they learn that they can <laughs> dispose of it in the garbage anytime they have a poop or a skid mark or anything that, oh, that's easy, I'll just, just like a diaper, you know, just do it for yourself, don't let them see it. So, um, the poop, a lot of times there's psychological, there's a lot of psychological involved with poop. So for a lot of boys, what it seems like, they don't want to let, it's a part of them and they love it. They don't want to let it go in that. They want to keep it close to them for as long as possible. So for some reason, that's what boys do. It seems like more boys than girls. So it's really hard for them to let it go in the toilet. So you're going to want to use some different um, strategies, like read stories about you know how poop goes in the toilet. We have some social story samples. There's some on our website. Um, here's like just this one student. He would not, it took so long for him to figure out to poop in the toilet. 
and his mom tried reading stories, it didn't work, showing little videos, it didn't work. Use YouTube, if your kids like YouTube, watch videos about pooping and peeing in the toilet on YouTube. Um, just be careful where your search engines, who sees your search engines. Um, so this one mom, I said, oh, I have a visual, maybe try that and just put it up in the bathroom. So she looks at it and she's like, it, it didn't have the brown right there. So she grabbed a crayon, just quickly colored it brown right there because it was just like a circle. So and it just says poop in toilet. Very simple. She hung it in the bathroom and she kept showing him, look, poop goes in the toilet. Come on, poop in the toilet. Well, about a week later, he comes out of somewhere in the house. She's in the kitchen and he comes out and he goes, brown goes in the toilet. And she was like, what? He goes, brown goes in the toilet. She went running to the bathroom. Sure enough, he had put the brown in the toilet instead of in his underwear. It just clicked because of this picture. And it took a little while still, but she kept trying all different things. Don't give up. Keep trying different unique things to get it to get it to work. My son took a long time to poop in the potty and we had a trip planned and I thought it was a way long enough after when I first started potty training, we were going to Disney. And I thought, oh, no big deal, that's way far away. Of course he'll be pee pee trained and poop trained by then. Well, guess what? He was pee pee trained, great. But he would not let go of that poop in the toilet. So I thought going to Disney was gonna ruin the whole process. I thought for sure, I just, it's blown to bits. Well. He would hold it until we got home from the day. So the poor kid was, we weren't getting home till like 10, 11 at night. We had a little timeshare. We weren't getting there till really late. And he kept going under the stool to go. Funny, it's a stool, right? <laughs> he would go under the stool and he would go in his underwear. And then, you know, we went through that whole process, no emotion. And then, um, this one evening we got home and I go to look under the stool and he's not under the stool. I'm like, where is he? And I go looking down. And then all of a sudden, I just, all I saw was two feet dangling. <laughs> and I, I like cried, I'm telling you. I could not wait for this. And I looked and I'm like, you're going to poop on the potty. I was so excited. I got a sister. And I'm like, he went poop on the potty. She's like, yay. We're all excited, everybody's excited, and it was just awesome. So just hold on, you'll get those moments when you get so excited when they finally get it, and you never know what's gonna make it work. Mickey made it work, Mickey is magic. Mickey made it work for my son. So you never know, I thought Mickey was gonna ruin it. <laughs> but it worked. Okay, so there are so many other little concerns and questions related to potty training. We've probably heard it all through the years, so do not hesitate to ask. Um, questions like, well, how about when you teach wiping, and please teach, start teaching wiping right away. You want them to get that skill down. You do not want anybody else wiping your child's bottom. You want them to learn to do that as soon as possible. So we have a visual for wiping you can try. Here it is, and then, you know, and. Think about your home too. Maybe you don't use toilet paper. Maybe you have a bidet. So you, but when they go to Target, there's no bidet. <laughs> so you've got to teach them to wipe with toilet paper. So make sure that you're teaching them all the skills they need. If my kids had to go somewhere and they didn't have toilet paper and only had a bidet, my kids wouldn't know what to do. So if I'm going somewhere, I'm gonna have to teach them to use a bidet. Think about that both ways, you know? Like, you wanna make sure your child has as many skills from as many different environments as possible. So here's a wiping schedule you can use. Use visuals. We have bathroom rules because you're gonna to wanna to start teaching them privacy and shutting the door. When my daughter first potty trained herself, I swear she did it was the funniest thing, but um, we had a friend over and he comes over and he goes, um, so um, Amelia's in the bathroom. And I'm like, really? He goes, I said, what is she doing? He goes, she's on the toilet, she's going to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, okay. And I think that was the first time she peed by herself. And I said, what did you, what did you do? And he goes, I shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> and 
we just laughed so hard. He didn't have any kids, so he had no idea what to do. And he was like, oh, oh, excuse me. And he shut the door. And then we like ran in. Oh, you want to be beautiful? You were so happy. But, um, you know, like eventually you do want to get them to learn to shut the doors so this privacy flush the toilet, get them desensitized to the toilet flushing sound if they don't like them, teach them to wash their hands with soap, teach them to dry their hands, teach them all of those skills, and turn out the light too. Unless you're in a public restroom, make sure they don't turn out the light. There are so many skills involved with pottying. Make sure your boys, as they get a little older, that their, your husband or uh, uncle or grandfather, anyone teaches them the social rules of the ma male restroom. I, I didn't know any of this because, you know, just, I'm the girl. But having a son, I had to talk through this with my husband. He's like, well, there's definitely rules. He's like, you don't look at the person next to you while you, you know, <laughs> like. And uh, so many students, we've had to work through the process of teaching them not to pull their pants all the way down. So we have a visual for that. I don't think it's here, but we have it available where it's man bathroom rules at a urinal. You keep your waistband up. You can't pull your pants all the way down in the toilet, in the men's restroom. There's a lot of rules social and just hygiene and things you're going to have to teach. So be prepared, teach it all now. Teach it all, you know, not all together, but know that it's gonna be a process. And you're gonna have snafus, you're gonna have things that come up and some might make you cry, but remember that you're gonna laugh later. And you might be telling a room full of people all about the things that your child did, you never know and they're not gonna like it. <coughs> Okay, um, there's going to be some regression sometimes. I have no idea how I am with time. You've got about five minutes. Okay, perfect. So be prepared. A lot of times there's regression. Um, I went through this with my daughter. She was um, in preschool, and I was going to pick her up, and her teacher would say, oh, she wet her panties. And, like, she, ha she had been potty trained for a while, and she was wetting her panties, like, every day for a week. And I went to the teacher, I'm like, what's going on? Like, we never had a problem. Why is she doing this? She's like, relax, relax. I, I go through this with every student. They all regress. I know what's going on. She was, in. it happened every day at recess because she was out way far. She found, and come to find out through later on, they, there was this amazing clover patch, and it was spring, and the clover was growing. And it was way far away at the back fence, and my daughter was spending a lot of time eating the clovers. And she loved it, and she was having so much fun. And the bathroom was way too far away for her to go. So she was staying out there. Why should I go in there? I'm just gonna. So you're gonna have weird things happen that are, you may have regression, don't freak out. I learned to teach my daughter not to eat clovers <laughs> and to take time out to go to the bathroom. So I had to start giving her a reinforcer, you have to back up sometimes. When I picked her up, I asked if she had the same panties on that she went to school in. If she did, she got a reinforcer on the way home. And that's what took care of it. Now, I gave her something more reinforcing than clovers. <laughs> I was on top of that one. Okay, aim training with boys. Figure out ways to teach them. Make sure you're teaching them the skill of aim. It's keeps you from having a clean extra. Some kids have a fear of falling in. You might have to work through that. There's lots of different ways to get around that. Playing in the water, like I said, put something on their lap when they're in there so they're not in the water. Um, kids that love, there's kids that love the sound of the flush. And you can't get them out of the bathroom because they're flushing, 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 flushing. So you've got to work through that. Give them rules. We flush one time. And then maybe reinforce when they only flush one time. Um, sense of smell. I went through this with my daughter when I started teaching her to go in public places. She did not want to go in some bathrooms because of the smell. She's very, very sensitive to smell. So, and it wasn't just if somebody had pooped five minutes earlier. Sometimes it was the cleaner that they used. Yes, we have great times with this sniffer of my daughter's. So, I, I actually had to teach her to hold, either hold her nose like this when she was younger to go in and then quick go to the bathroom, but then I taught her to hold her nose without 
making a scene, <laughs> especially if somebody was just coming out with the eye gone. So, um, you know, you're going to have to be creative sometimes, and um, to this day, she's still, like, I put a car refresher, freshener in my car, and she got my car, and she goes, it smells like um, bathroom cleaner. I can't take it. So I had to take it out of my car. <laughs> so there's some, and or, you know, maybe put a little essential oil on your child's upper lip before they go into the bathrooms if they don't like it. So find little creative ways to get through those things. Having accidents in the car, like I said, put protective covering down and you're going to have to get through that fear. If you have a new car with really plush new seats, figure it out. Take care of it. Mentally prepare yourself. Um, this, the requesting the bowel movement. Some kids will only, like I said, have the bowel movement in a pull-up. So that is a really hard transition for a lot of kids. It was hard for my son, and he actually, what he used to go when he would get home, and he got home one night and went upstairs and then came back downstairs, and his pants were on backwards. And I was like, that's odd. Why are your pants on backwards? So I went over and I like look, and he had gone upstairs, found his old stash of pull-ups, and put the pull-ups on so he could poop in the pull-up. And this was before he had figured out that poop goes in the toilet. And Mickey taught him right. So um, you know he found he actually had to get on a step ladder to get them out of the top of his closet and pull one off and he put it on and then put his pants back on and came down like it was no big deal. That's how, you know, difficult it was to get him out of that out of that pull up. So you could cut holes in the pull up because some just like the waistband around them. So you could hold, cut a hole in it so they the poop will go through to the bathroom. If they do poop in their underwear, plop it in the toilet, show them where it does go. Always put it where it does go and go, yay! poop in the toilet we love poop in the toilet always keep working on that to get them have them see you pooping in the toilet show them your poop I know it sounds ridiculous but sometimes that's what does the trick if you're a reinforcer for them and I think that is it thank you very very much now you can ask some questions if you have a few more minutes